Okay, so we're going to, in this video, uh, calculate the area of a torus. And a torus is a donut type object that's defined by two radii. One radii starts from the center and goes to this point uh, in the center of the tube here, that's denoted by capital R. And the other is denoted by lowercase r, and that tells you the radii or the thickness of kind of the torus itself. And the volume, you can look this up, is given by two pi squared uh, times r squared times the big R. And uh, there's, there's several ways to calculate this. We're gonna calculate it using calculus uh, in this video. And so here what I've drawn is a cross section, sort of looking at uh, one of the cross sections of the tube. So maybe a circle here and a circle there at one point. And so this again just shows you R, big R is the distance between the center of those two circles to the center of uh, one of the circles. And then little r defines the radii of each of the circles. And so what we're gonna be doing is, uh, let me just define the axis here. So we're gonna call this um, x. And so this point here, we would call x equals zero. And this point would be uh, x equals r, little r, right? Because it's the radius. And uh, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be adding up um, kind of cylinder type objects, although they're, they look like cylinders with the, their centers cut out. So it's sort of gonna look like this, uh, where in perspective view now you have a circle. So this is a sort of a flat circle like this. Um, and now you have the center cut out of it. Um, and so that's gonna have a certain thickness and it's gonna be very tiny thickness, infinitesimally small. Um, but we're going to be adding up those sort of pieces, those washers type pieces with uh, infinitesimally small thickness um, and the radius of these pieces, these washer pieces is going to be changing over time, which is why we have to use calculus. Okay, and so we're going to call that thickness uh, dy. Okay, it's a differential, so it's a very small, infinitesimally small y. And this thickness, okay, um, of that outer circle, the outer circle area is going to be given by, well, it's like a pi r squared type relationship, but it's not pi, quite pi r squared. That outer point here is getting us there. So that's going to be big R, that's going to have a radius of big R plus little r. So it's going to be big R plus little r squared. And then uh, we're going to to figure out the area of this uh, piece, we're going to have to, uh, this washer piece, subtract out this inner circle. And so the inner circle is going to have a uh, radius of r minus r. So it'd be pi times r minus r squared. How does that work? Well, big R gets us here, and the inner um, circle that we're subtracting out, the inside of the washer, is then going to have to just subtract out r. Now, that's at that bottom point here, okay? But really, what this is, that's gonna be floating over time, okay? That's only valid at this bottom point. Over time, you can see as you trace up the circle, those values that we need to add and subtract are gonna, sm are gonna get smaller. They're gonna actually, you know, eventually uh, get to zero when we're at this point. So we need to um, change this here to, something more generic, which is gonna be x, okay? And x is something that we can then float. So r is gonna be changed into x here, and that's gonna get us our area. Now we want a volume, and so we need to times it by dy. So that's our tiny little piece, okay? So now we can set up an integral where we're gonna be going from zero to r, okay? So we're gonna be adding up all these little pieces in this hemisphere. Okay, in that hemisphere there. And uh, so we're just gonna enter in that volume. Uh, and so that's pi r plus x squared minus pi r minus x squared times all times dy. Now that was just one hemisphere I mentioned, right? We also doing this hemisphere at the same time because we're doing r and r we're expanding that whole area, but it's only a hemisphere, so we need to times this whole volume by two. 
Okay, so let's just do some simplification at this point. Um, let's factor out these different variables. So I'm gonna pull out a pi, because that's a constant that's, that's in here. Um, and then let's just foil these out. So we're gonna have uh, r plus x squared, that's gonna be r squared plus 2xr plus x squared, and then we have r minus x squared. That's a minus of that whole term. We pulled out the pi. It's gonna be minus r squared, um, but it's a, a minus of a minus in there. So it's gonna be plus 2xr, right? And then we're also going to have uh, a minus x squared. So minus x times a minus x because it's a positive x, but it's a minus. Okay, just some algebra there. And uh, now you can see a lot of terms cancel. Our r squares cancel, so r squared minus x squared. Our r squared and our x squares cancel because we have x squared minus x squared. So we're left with something that's looking a lot simpler now, which is basically two pi times uh, the integral zero to r from of four x r, okay, uh, let's see, times dy, okay? And so we can furthermore pull out these constants, four and r are our constants, right? So that's gonna get us eight pi r from zero to r of uh, x dy. Now we still have this incongruency here of x and, and y. And so how are we gonna relate x and y? Well, that's using the equation of a circle, okay? All right, which is, so that's embodying sort of this circular uh, area of that hemisphere and how that radius, the, those radii are gonna vary, okay? And so uh, x is going to be then equal to just solving for that r squared minus y squared, square root of that. And so at that point, we can plug that in for x, eight pi r, zero r, square root r squared minus y squared dy. So let's just pull that up to the other page here. Um, so our volume was equal to 8 pi r um, 0 to r square root of r squared minus y squared dy, the integral. Um, so this is not actually a, um, a trivial integral to uh, solve. And it, it, it turns out that you know the best way to do this is to use a calculator or look this up on a, an integral table. And if you do that, uh, you can see this is what you'll get, okay. So this integral ends up being uh, one half y times r squared minus y squared uh, plus one half r squared and tan inverse, which is kind of interesting, of y over square root r squared minus y squared. Pretty gnarly looking at this point. Again, not super intuitive, it takes some pretty advanced math to uh, know those integrals, but nonetheless, we can now uh, plug in everything we have. So we have eight pi r, our constant, and we're gonna plug in r first for y, so one half r times root r squared minus r squared. You can see that's going to be root zero, so that's going to all go away. That's going to be zero plus one half um, r squared tan inverse of we're plugging in for r here for y uh, r divided by r squared minus r squared. Okay, and then we're going to now be subtracting the zero terms. So we're gonna have one half times zero. Uh, right away, we don't have to go further. That's gonna be equal to nothing. And then we're also subtracting our uh, very long tan inverse term, one half r squared tan inverse. And for y, we're putting in zero. Zero divided by uh, r squared minus uh, zero squared. 
Okay, we have zero in the numerator and the tan inverse of zero is zero. It's asking us the tangent of what is equal to zero. Well, the tangent of zero equals zero. So that whole term is now also going away. That's a zero. So we're left with one term here. Um, and that is an interesting term, which is one half r squared tan inverse of r over zero, because it's root r squared minus r squared. So it's actually the tan inverse of infinity. The first solution for this is pi over two. Okay, it's asking what slope, basically, because tangent is slope, right? What slope will give you um, infinite slope? What, what's the tangent of an infinite slope, basically, it's asking you? Okay, tangent, an infinite slope is pi over two, because that's a 90 degree angle, right? It has an undefined slope. So that will then get you uh, eight pi r times one half r squared times pi over two. And if you cancel all these eights and twos out, that's gonna get you two pi, uh, eight divided by four, right? R times R squared, which uh, two pi squared, sorry. Pi times a pi, R times R squared, and eight divided by four. And that is your volume of a torus. And uh, if you think about this, sort of makes sense. You can write this as uh, pi r squared, right, the area of the circle times 2 pi r. That's sort of the diameter um, of, it's the diameter and the circumference of this whole thing kind of spread out if you were to cut this torus open and extend it out. But uh, anyway, this is using calculus to determine the volume of a torus.